Today, we're going to do the grammar because, well, you guys asked for it. So as you guys know, new digital SAT content every single day. Um, that you guys are coming onto the channel asking for more content. So I am pumping these out. And here we have a grammar question. And as you guys know from watching all the other videos, right, guys, that um, they have combined the reading and writing into one section. They are literally just calling it reading and writing, although I think English would be more concise, but that's what they're doing. So today we're going to do a little bit of punctuation. Today's question type is, you could call it punctuation. Yeah, I think punctuation would be fine. But moreover, it is sentence connector, run-on sentences. Um, I'm giving you a lot of terms so that you can recognize what this is even if you see a variety of questions, okay? So number one thing I do, so I have always noticed that this is the type of question first. So you see all this text here? What do I do with that text? You guys should know at this point, what do I do with that text? I don't read it, right? I don't read that at all for now. What do I do? I go to the question itself. So I notice that it is a grammar question because this wording right here, the conventions of standard English. And I noticed that the answer choices here are the same words pretty much they just have different punctuation, okay? So I know this is a punctuation question. Right, pretty simple, right? I just look at a question first. The answer choices differ by punctuation, so it's a punctuation question. Okay, so now let's look at the sentence with that. This first sentence doesn't matter at all because it's just a punctuation question. I don't care about the meaning, okay? So let's look at the second sentence. And this may not look like I'm saving much, but I am literally saving half of the time because I'm not reading half the text. And that adds up over the course of that exam. Confucius defined piety as acting according to one's blank, that all of life's virtues stem from the fulfillment of one's responsibilities. Okay, so this is indicator, guys. So when I see punctuation differs with comma, colon, semicolon, period, and all that, that is a either a run-on or a compound sentence question. In other words, I'm asking, how do I connect these two sentences together properly? Okay, so... I don't really actually have to look at the content here. So those of you who know your grammar pretty well, without re even reading the text out of A, B, C, and D, I can eliminate three of them, which obviously means I know what the answer is, right? So if you guys can do that, do it now, yeah. So I don't even really care whether these should be two sentences or whether this should be one sentence. Why is that? Let's look at answer choice D. So we have a period and then I have a new thing. So that means it should be a new sentence, right? That's two sentences. That's the most basic one, right? When you put a period, it's a new sentence. When I put a semicolon, that is also two sentences, okay? So C and D are wrong right away. And you guys know this, why? Because if one answer choice makes another answer choice true, that's wrong. You can't have two correct answers on the SAT. So because C and D would both make for two sentences, they are out, okay? And for the same reason, which one is out? B's out. And that's our answer, A. Okay, so for this one, I don't even have to get into how come this is a sentence, what's a complete sentence, I didn't care, okay? So I have four options here, comma, which is not a sentence, semicolon, sentence, colon, sentence, period, sentence. Pick the answer choice that sticks out. I have covered this idea many, many times, and that's how you would do this uh, grammar question in the quick and dirty and easy way, okay? So normally people will go through the grammatical ideas of what's a complete uh, clause, independent clause, all of that. I don't care about that for this question at all. So that's it for today's quick and dirty video, guys. So what is it? First, um, identify what question is, as I do in every single video, right? So punctuation question, I noticed that three of the uh, answer choices are the same because they're all about making two sentences. So I picked the one that stands out, which is just this is one sentence. And that's it for today, guys. Study every day with Sexy J. And keep leaving the comments, guys. I will get to all of them. The comments are picking up a little bit. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick up my speed and replying as well. And it's been really, really helpful, uh, all, all of your um, input and all of your questions. So please keep them going. I uh, appreciate you guys. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hi, hey, it's Sexy J. Quick and dirty time today is going to be really, really quick and dirty. It's going to, well, it's not going to be extra dirty, but it's going to be really quick. So this is, again, grammar on the new digital SAT. This is not really a new question, but why am I going over it? Because you guys wanted me to, right? And it's also a pretty good ind indicator of the new test because, as I told you guys before, in terms of the grammar, they're very much more simplified much more simplified than the traditional paper SAT. So this is a very uh, common type of question already on the test, and it has a very simple structure. So going forward on the digital SAT, it's going to be even more common. They're not really testing you anymore on the more difficult concepts. So what is today's concept? Subject-verb agreement. 
You guys say, oh, I know how to do that. It comes up a lot on regular SAT. So what am I going to give you guys that's a little bit extra? Well, how to do it quickly, right? I said that before. Okay, so subject verb agreement. So the answer to this thing is going to be, well, I'm not going to tell you the answer yet. We'll get there. Okay, so um, as always, what's the first step, guys? Yeah, you skip the text, right? And you go to the question. You're like, yeah, you told me that last video. I know, I know, Jay. Good, okay? And the reason I remind you each time, guys, is like, number one, maybe it's your first time watching the video. Number two, in my um, group classes, it took seven weeks, seven weeks for the students to actually listen to me and start reading the blurb. I told them, Kevin, did you read the blurb? Sorry, Kevin, I'm calling you out. Kevin, did you read the blurb? He always said no until week seven. And you know what Kevin said on week seven? Oh my God, Jay, I read the blurb. It really has everything. It's so helpful. Why didn't you do that in weeks one through six? I don't know, okay? Kevin and I are pretty cool though. I was gonna say, I love you, Kevin. I don't love you, but like, you're pretty cool, okay? Anyway, I don't think he watches my videos. So um, as I was saying, I'm gonna keep saying this guys, okay? Because you really need to. Skip the text, right? Go to the question. So you can see what kind of question it is. And then you'll be like, oh yeah, this is what Jay told me. Um, some of my students go like, oh yeah, this is what Sexy Jay told me. When you think about me in your head, you can just call me Jay, okay? It's a little bit of pressure to call me Sexy Jay all the time. Although I guess that's better for branding, so maybe. Okay, so this one, um, the convention standard English that uh, broadly lets you know that this is grammar, but provides, are providing, have provided, provide, all of these things differ in terms of, uh, well, not all of them. So this is singular versus plural. Okay, They do differ in tense, but you see here that A is singular, and B, B is plural, and C is plural, and D is plural. So I'll just write P. So from here, uh, seasoned uh, viewers of Sexy J Channel will probably be able to guess what the answer is from here right away. Very similar content as last time, okay? So let's actually go to the text and let's write here. As before, for most of the grammar-focused questions, the text itself doesn't matter. And, and I say every time, it kind of pains me to cross all this out because I have to write it, but it's okay. Just focus on the last sentence here, literally the last sentence. The practice of giving the less skilled player additional pieces, blanket advantage that can be calibrated by the players. Okay, I don't need to know what that means. So this is the verb. Where is the subject? Okay, this is the number one place you should look, guys. You should look as far away from the verb as possible. Okay, that means at the very beginning of the sentence, the practice. So the practice, that's the subject, practice. There's a reason I'm writing it in like this, okay? So the um, subject of practice is singular. Practice is singular. But you see over here, we have the word pieces right next to the verb, which sounds plural. I mean, it is plural. This is probably the most repeated common trick thing on the entire SAT, in terms of this very, very, um, on every single test and on multiple questions. On a singular subject verb agreement thing, they will put in a plural sounding thing right next to the verb, but the subject is actually far away in singular or the other way around. They do this all the time, guys. Super common trick. Don't fall for it. Okay. So the practice, so the practice is singular. So I would just go, okay, practice it. So it would be, it provides. That's it. That's the answer. Okay. So that's the actual grammatical way of doing it. Is there a quicker way of doing it? Of course there is, guys. So. What I notice here that B, C, D are plural and A is singular, the answer is A, singular, okay? Just like in my last video, right? If I have one answer choice that sticks out from the other ones, like that's the answer. Because B, C, and D, they're all plural. So if B is right, then C is right, then D is right. Can they all be right? No, they can't. You can't have multiple correct answers on the SAT. And lastly, um, B, C, and D, this is, I'm just also going through what kind of problems with the, um, do students have with this? Because it's a pretty simple concept. Well, so what trips people up? They also ask, um, Jay, couldn't this be like a tense question? So couldn't there be a difference between are providing and have provided and provide the present tense? Sure. Does the SAT do that? Not really, okay? They are much more, like 9999 whatever percent more, likely to ask you the singular um, plural subject verb agreement than they are to ask about tenses. I will make, now that I brought it up, a uh, uh, video uh, dedicated to tenses and be like, these are the specific and limited ways they test the tenses, but overall, it's not gonna be the tense, it's gonna be the subject verb agreement, okay? So the actual strategy here is very simple. You either notice that uh, the one answer is singular, the rest are plural, so the singular one's the answer, or you actually look at the text and go, oh, the beginning of the sentence has a subject. That's the verb, so it should be singular. And that's pretty much it. And make sure to just focus on the question type and to ignore the rest of the text, that doesn't matter. 
That's it for today's quick and dirty, guys. So the actual strategy is pretty quick, right? That is probably one of the quickest ones we have. And let me know in the comments, um, especially if it's grammar related as well, because I did the reading first because honestly, there's nobody better at reading than I am probably in the world. If you guys find the guy, let me know. I would like to like collab with him, learn from him. It's always nice to learn. But in the grammar, I haven't been doing that because there are a lot of good re grammar resources out there. But if you guys want me to do it, I'll do it. So, you know, leave comments, all of that. Love you guys. See you guys next time. Study every day with who? Sexy J. Bye bye. Welcome to another round of Quick and Dirty, guys. Today, new digital SAT, as always. And I'm doing something that, honestly, a lot of people can't do, which is the literature specialty. So today's question type is literary characterization. Does that sound difficult? It could be if it wasn't for this video. Honestly, though, guys, on the digital SAT, the literary stuff is not going to be as hard as on the AP Lang or the AP Lit, as you guys already know, because you guys already watched my other videos, right? Thank you. And so today's question is, the, again, the literary um, characterization. So how do I know that? You guys know the drill at this point, right? Skip the text. Just go to the question. So the question asks, according to the text, how could mother be characterized? Uh, one thing here, guys, if I have the word mother, being capitalized like that, that means that's like her name, that's her title, okay? That's a proper noun. But that doesn't really matter for this question. But you should know that anyway. So let's um, look at these things. Before I go into the text, um, let's do a little drill. Which answer choices here would you say are unlikely? None of them are terrible, per se. Which one would be unlikely? So pause the screen, whatever, as you do. I don't know why I keep pausing myself when I do that, right? But anyway, so which ones are bad? Answer choice A and B are bad. They're really, really unlikely. Why are they really, really unlikely? Because, yeah, they are extreme, okay? I feel like a little bit like Dora the Explorer, pretending I can hear you guys, but yeah, they're extreme answers because this one says crucial and this one says favorite, okay? So if it was like religious piety is important to her, maybe, right? Things could be important to a person, but what does crucial mean? It's absolutely essential, indispensable that they cannot live without it. Would I get something that extreme as evidence on the SAT text? Pretty unlikely. And if that were the case, this should be a really easy question. Like, oh yeah, for sure. That's the number one thing. Second, um, we're not gonna really even have religious characters on these SATs. Religion is not a topic that is okay to come up. If you guys watch my other videos, you could say, oh, wasn't that a historical passage, blah, blah, blah. Forget the historical passage. They don't exist anymore on the new digital SAT, okay? So that's out because of the word crucial and also religion. If you guys care about the vocab, which you should, it's fun to learn words. Uh, piety, religious piety is being holy and doing what you're supposed to do according to your religion, which for most of the time is Christianity. But again, religion is not going to be part of the new digital SAT. So we'll move on. Next one, I don't like the word favorite here. Why? Because that means it's number one. So you, as you guys know, what is a super super common trap or a tactic? They put in something that is a more extreme version of what was in the text. So could it be that she likes tea? Sure, right? I really, I, yeah, I like tea, right? Could you say that uh, tea is my favorite beverage? Even if you saw me drinking tea every day for let's say a week, would you still know if tea is my favorite beverage? Probably not, because I actually prefer beer and you guys just probably wouldn't catch me drinking beer because you guys should be studying. So those two things are out. And what is the answer? Let's go to the text now. Okay. And the likely answer here is D because like that's just like a nothing statement, but we'll check if it is. Okay, let's start from line one. Having no patience for tea. Okay, so she doesn't like tea, so this is doubly out. Mother often claimed that she simply had no desire to drink boiled leaf water. Although I saw her savoring a cup almost every day. You see this here, the word savor. And that's why the answer to C is here, because it's just lifting the words straight from the text, which, as you guys know, very likely indicator of a trap answer. It was the company which tired her, as she did not wish to entertain, so she does not like to entertain. Answer to C is also. So you see, they put in the word saver, they put in the word entertain. Why? Because they were in the passage. But they just mismatched him. And saver means she likes it. But what, is, what do we have here? She doesn't like being entertained. So by elimination, you could be like, oh, could I just go with D and move on? Well, let's be a little bit more sure than that. With uh, nor be entertained by the ladies of the town. With us, she had boundless patience like a saint and a boundless energy like a child. So this is what I want to point out, guys, as I say in almost every video in the recent, like I would say, 10 videos. Do not get bogged down by details you don't understand. That's a weird phrase. I know it because I wrote the phrase. I wrote it to be weird. So what does that even mean? I don't care because I just want to answer the question. She made us tea, helped us with figures, mended our clothes, and so here, people also get stuck up, like, what does it mean to help us with figures? In older language, help us with figures, help with math. 
Does that matter? No, not at all. Mended our clothes and even accompanied us in making sure we got our time out in the sun daily. So, accompanied us, got time out in the sun. That is, in regular language, what? She went outside with us because, guys, the sun's outside. The sun is not inside. Duh. Okay? So, this is a very, very good answer for the SAT because it doesn't say the word outside in the passage. It's not there. It has to be inferred, reasonably inferred, or paraphrased from what was in the text, which was out in the sun. So out in the sun becomes outside. So does she go outside? Yeah, she does. She, go she actually goes every day. Okay. So this is the last note. This is the much more likely direction that they're going to do. We're not going to have something mild becoming extreme in the answer choice. That's wrong. However, in the answer, we have she does this every day. But the answer choice says, just says she does it. Okay, it becomes less extreme. That is much, much more likely. Okay, so if the passage says, like, this um, key lime pie is my absolute favorite dessert in the world, then the answer is going to be, like, he's okay with key lime pie. Like, it's that level of weakening of evidence that's more likely. Okay, so that's um, today's quick and dirty. I know that the question type I said today was literary characterization, but all of these um, concepts you guys are hopefully applying across all of the questions because getting rid of the extreme answers, right, and looking for the paraphrase, that is like the core tenets of the SAT and also the ACT, if you guys are going to take that, and every standardized reading test, okay? And as you guys have been doing, leave in the questions whatever you guys want to see covered, okay? And thank you for leaving so many comments lately. Love you guys. See you guys next time. Study every day with SexJ. That's the way. Bye-bye. Hi, hey, it's SexJ. Welcome to the round of Quick and Dirty, guys. I have a fractured wrist. So my handwriting is going to be the same as always. Terrible. But yeah, I'm here to make a Quick and Dirty for you guys on the... Digital SAT, exclusive question, as you guys have been asking for. So this is the claiming the data, right, that supports the claim, okay? So let me put that in simpler words. It is the finding the data that supports the claim. What is that? Find the data. Let's call it find the data. That sounds easy enough, yeah? Okay, so look at all of this text, guys. Let's see if my right hand works right now. It does. Cool. That's a lot, okay? That is a huge amount of text. I, what do you, you guys know, right? Don't, I don't want you to read it. Please don't read it, okay? I mean, I made it, so if you, want, if you guys read it after, that's cool, okay? So if I see something like this, and no, also pay attention to the number, guys. This will probably come up in like number 15, 13, 14-ish. These are all pretty much in the same order. So here, all of those words, I have the question itself. You guys know this, right? We do this all the time. I jump to the question itself. Which choice best describes the data from the table that supports the researcher's claim? Okay, so I need data that supports the claim. So I only need to look at the claim. I don't, I was about to curse, I don't give a whatever about anything else. So let's look at where is the claim, guys. Yeah, last paragraph, yeah. Okay, y'all need that. Okay, so let's look here. Comparing these numbers to the expectation set from random distribution, the researchers claim that caterpillars that feed on thorny trees gain an advantage in protection and are thus more fit through this behavior. Wow, that sounds like a lot of science, right? So if you guys paid attention in biology class, good. And you guys know about natural selection, also good. If you didn't, well, that might be why you're here. Okay. So the key here is just, okay, uh, discards the data. I just want, okay, either. This is what I want you guys to focus. Oh, I can write pretty well. Data, higher or lower. That's it. So I'm going to say my claim is valid because the numbers here are higher. Or my claim is valid because the numbers are lower. That's it, guys, okay? I don't care about the details. So it's higher or lower. So what am I looking for? The caterpillars that feed on thorny trees gain an advantage and are thus more fit through this behavior. I use this wording in purpose. Okay, guys, think about it. If people gain an advantage, does that mean the number is going to go up or low? Let's see. Uh, millionaires gain an advantage in American economy, so they make more money, even though they have money, right? They make more. If you had an advantage, it's going to go up, okay? So just from the word advantage, you know it's going to go up. So from here, well, you if you were to guess, it would be probably C or D because it says higher and higher, but I'm not going to give it away at the moment, okay? So let's see. Let's try to figure this out. I want, if you feed on thorny trees, it's better. If it's better, you would do more of it, right? Okay. So let's look here. Let's look at the data. What backs up the fact that they like feeding on thorny trees? I do not care at all about these okay so this is another clue guys when you get this huge table in the data focus on the right column okay 
I don't care about totals. I don't care about whatever. It only matters the percent. Let me tell you a little bit about the background stage and why, because it's going to be very important for not just this question, but a lot of database questions on science. I only care how much is something better or worse than the other thing. Okay. Let's give you a drastic example. I gave 20 people medicine, 15 of them got better. Did the medicine work? Some of you might say, yeah, some of you say might no. you guys have to look at the comparison. 20 people, 15 survived with the medicine. There's another group. I didn't give them medicine. All of them died. Then you can say, yeah, the medicine probably works. Why? Comparatively, it works. Let's look here. And this is the other clue, guys. If it's random, you guys should know this, right? Okay. There are two events. If it's random, what's the percentage of each thing? 50%, right? 50-50. So you see here that it's above 50% for all of them. Okay. So the evidence for thorns are good is thorns are higher than 50%. If you guys just forget everything I just said, if you just memorize it like this, this should still work. Okay. Evidence for something is good. Why? Because it's over 50%. Turn it around. Evidence for something is bad. Why? Because it's below 50%. Good enough. Okay. Therefore, thorns are good because thorns are over 50%. What is close to that? What do you guys think? It is D. Okay. Notice how the wording for C and D are pretty much the same because that's what SAT makes. That's why I made them like that. Okay. And if you look at the wording here, that's a lot of words, right? Higher than would be expected if caterpillar feeding behavior randomly distributed. That was hard to say, even for me. That just means if it didn't matter. Okay. So, um, I'll look at all of this stuff over here again, does not matter. So if I'm looking for the data that supports the claim, I just have to check one, are they saying something's good or bad? If it's good, then do I have to check? Is it higher or lower? Okay. And you have to use a little bit of common sense. Okay. So if I'm saying, for example, that, um, medicine is good. What is that? People who lived would be higher. People who died would be lower. A little bit of common sense like that. And that's it guys. Hope you guys can save a lot of time on these questions. Look at all that text. I can't even fit the whole thing in, even if I try to zoom in. I have to hold it like here. Yeah. So this was one of the things that you guys have been asking about for a while. Well, not for a while. A few of you have been asking, so I did it. Okay. Uh, my handwriting is atrocious as always, but I don't think that should have mattered. So um, please keep leaving the comments whether you want to see questions on this. I've also seen some questions on the regular SAT, so I'll get to that probably in my next video or so. Leave me the comments. I'll get back to you guys. Love you guys. See you soon. Um, hope you guys are doing better than me. And see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Welcome, guys, to Quick and Dirty. Let's get right to it, guys. Look at this question. What kind of question is it? Where do you go? To the question. Duh, right? It's getting pretty repetitive, hopefully. Which means you guys probably, you know, remember act actually, actually, to do these things when you do the test. Okay. So let's just jump right to the question. Which finding of true would most directly support the researcher's hypothesis? So what kind of question is this? Support the hypothesis, okay? So my previous video was about probably about supporting hypothesis through data. How is this one different? Because it's on text, textual evidence for hypothesis. But if you guys want to take notes, it's just support the hypothesis question on the digital SAT. Okay, what do we do with all this text that I, I took such a pain to write? You ignore it, right? Okay. So let's go to the last sentence or two, because if I want to look up what supports a hypothesis, then I need to know what is the hypothesis. Pretty simple, right? Where is the hypothesis right here in the last sentence or two? Sometimes you have to read the last two sentences, but I see the word hypothesized. That means hypothesis. Okay. So let's look at it here. Based on this observation, the ecologists have hypothesized. There we go that the plants break down the rocks with these enzymes, as this makes the rocks not only easier to burrow through and create room for further growth, but also aids with nitrogen fixation that results in the vital nutrients of nitrates and ammonia. Okay, just based on that, can you guys look at ABCD and try which one you guys might think? Because when I was making this, as you guys know, I make this based off of the Blue Book test. I actually had like a moment, I was like, is this going to be this or that? So I, I had to pause a little bit. So let's see, what do you guys think? As always, I pause myself, even though I don't need to. Okay, so you guys might have been stuck between two answer choices. And I do think in regular life, you could argue for both. But is SAT regular life? No, SAT just SAT. Yeah. So what is my actual answer going to be? I only care about this part. Okay, this part over here, I'm going to be very bold here because 
I've been living very bold. You know, I broke this risk with a different story I'm telling everybody, right? I Let's say I fought like, I don't know, 17 people at once. Yeah, no, I didn't. But yeah, I'll leave it a mystery, guys. So look at all this stuff here. I know we've already crossed at all this stuff in the beginning, right? Like, ah, uh, that's out. But you say, oh, then doesn't that mean I have to focus on this? No, because I need to support the hypothesis, right? The only part that's actually the hypothesis is from here to here. All right, okay, it's getting a little bit messy, but my wrist is broken, guys. Bear with me. I'm not going to redo this. Okay. I don't care about this stuff. That is there to what? Distract you, kind of hope to make you fail. Does that sound mean? Yes, College Board. I hope you guys are okay with my channel, but you guys are not very nice. Okay. You guys are not. Mm, eh, you guys are nice. Yeah, I say, I'll say, I'll say you're nice. Okay, so that stuff, if you guys are looking at that, you guys might have put C. Let me cross that out for you guys, okay? So don't get distracted. Let's just focus on exactly, exactly the words. Plants break down the rocks with these enzymes. That's hypothesis. Plants break down rocks with enzymes. Do you know what enzymes are? If you do, great. If you don't, we'll look it up. It's important. Yeah, but not for SAT. They break down rocks with enzymes. Which one says they break down rocks? D. Why is that? Does it use the word breakdown? No, because as you guys know from probably at least 30 of my videos, you guys have to paraphrase. You guys have to paraphrase. So it said they break down the rocks. Did they say it in the correct answer choice? No, of course not. Because that'd be too easy. That'd be a nice thing to do. Create new pathways through rocks. That is a stupid way to phrase that. I know, because I made that phrase. But they break down rocks can be turned into they create new pathways through rocks. What does that mean? They make holes in the rocks. That's breaking down the rocks. Okay. The rest of it, I don't really care. I don't even care about that at all. So if I summarize this and actually solving this, it sounds stupidly simple and short. And if I'm doing that, I'm probably on the right track. That's the explanation. So what is it? The hypothesis was they break down rocks. What supports the fact that they break down rocks? They make holes in the rocks. There we go. That's it. So that my answer is D. So to sum up, what do you do? The things that you always do, these things you should know by heart, tattoo it or something, okay? You do not read the text, right? You read the question. You identify it as support the hypothesis. So what do you do? You find the hypothesis. And then you ignore everything but the hypothesis. All of these things sound like common sense, right? So do the common sense, okay? So notice I crossed out everything else. You can do that on the actual test as well. This would be easier if I had a highlighter, but you don't get a highlighter in the test, so I'm not going to do that. So that's it for finding the evidence to support the hypothesis. A lot of you guys have been asking on various types of supporting the blank questions. So I'm doing a good variety. I think I recently did a table one. I'm doing the text one. If there are other varieties that I've missed, leave a comment, right? Or you could even shoot me a DM. That's fine. DMs are fun. If you guys track down my Instagram, it's a, it's a fun place. Yeah, I did like a Korean spa thing recently. I recommend. Oh, spa club, Manhattan. Shout out. Okay. 32nd Street, K-Town, guys. You guys see my, might see my face, might see my face on the street. Okay, uh, enough self-promotion, not really. This whole channel self-promotion, why? So I can help more of you people because I really actually enjoy doing this. See you guys next week. Oh yeah, my arm is like this. This will, You guys will see this for, I don't know, next six to eight weeks probably. So get used to it, I don't know. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Study every day with who? Me, Sexy J, the best way. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Today we have a lot of subscriber viewer requested questions and the topic here is um, research notes familiar topic. Research notes familiar topic. What the heck is that? That sounds weird, right? This is actually requested by, I hope I say your uh, username right, Abdul Malik, Hama, Abdul Malik Hakami. Correct me if I'm saying that wrong, guys. Um, so he literally said, those are so weird, yeah, in capital letters. And I got a sample, and I made this for you guys. So very new to the digital SAT is at the end of the uh, reading and writing section, we have a few questions that are like, the student um, took some notes while researching a topic, and we have a variety of questions. Out of those, specifically, we have, as you guys can see here, introduce familiar, OK? so. The last like three to four questions are on the notes and in the notes we have familiar introduction type of question. So this specifically asked and like, you know, he even DM me the sample of the question, so thank you. Uh, so we're going to get right to this. And as always, these are pretty quick and easy. They are weird though, they are pretty weird. I don't know why they even made these. Okay, so 
I made all of these references. If you guys recognize the watch references, good for you, fellow watch nerds. So we have all these bullet points. Do I care about those bullet points? No, I never do, right? As you guys know very, very well at this point, just go to the question. As I said before, you notice that it's introduced, familiar, familiar introduction. Why well, I'm emphasizing familiar introduction, there's also unfamiliar introduction, okay? So we're gonna do that soon. So familiar introduction, which choice most effectively uses, okay, this part doesn't matter, it's always the same, okay? So what am I doing? I'm introducing John Miner's book, okay? So where is the John Miner's book third bullet point? This is the book. So I need to first introduce John Miner's book. So I need to get rid of all the choices that don't have with the book. So A is out, because it doesn't have the book. So the title of the book is, it sounds dumb because I made it up, Famous Ritz and Brozinki. So that's not an A, so we take it out. And so we have B, C, and D left. Then next, familiar with Brozinki watch. Familiar with Brozinki watch. So that means I don't need to describe what Brozinki watch is, okay? <clears throat> so C, is just telling us what was the um, launching of Brzezinski watch. I don't need to know anything about it, okay? So if I say familiar with whatever, that means I don't want any information on that thing, okay? So it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but just follow along. If it says familiar with blank, then my answer choice should have as little information on that blank as possible, okay? So the answer is either B or D, okay? Let's see, which one would be better? As always, guessing time, you know, a little door at Explorer time. I did not pause, I did pause myself, I always do that, okay. So what do you guys think it is? B and D, they both kind of sound like kind of they introduced um, the book, right? So how can we differentiate between the two? Well, ah, you're like, oh, Jay, didn't you say you could elevate it? Oh, yes, why? Because what does D have again, guys? I really wish I could hear you guys. Oh, we should do a live soon. We should do a live soon. Thousands of subscribers are coming up. We're gonna do something. I'm, for, I'm trying to figure out what we're gonna do, but maybe a live, something. If you guys have suggestions, what you guys wanna see, let me know. Okay, so back to this question. How can we get eliminate D based on what I just taught you today? Yeah, it's telling us about the blog. I don't wanna learn about the blog. Why? Because I'm already familiar, okay? So if I were to do, okay guys, today we're gonna learn about the SAT, which is a test you have to take to get into college. I don't need to say that. You guys all already know that. That's right on the channel, right? So the answer here is B, okay? So notice I didn't actually have to look at what is a proper introduction of the book. Why? Because we got rid of A, it didn't talk about the book, okay? We got rid of C and D. Why? Because it talked about stuff that was already familiar. So that's it, guys. So the familiar introduction, even though it is super weird, all caps, is pretty easy to do. So you just need to get rid of all the stuff that has stuff about familiar things and then get rid of the things that doesn't introduce. So the answer here is B, John Miner's famous wrists and Brzezinski covers celebrities whose watch collections were featured on the blog during the pandemic. None of these things actually exist. I made them up, but doesn't really matter. Okay, guys, so we're going to just keep going through uh, these types of questions, and we're also gonna do cross-sex questions pretty soon. Why? Because you guys asked for them. So what does that mean? You guys you should keep asking so I can cover exactly what you guys need. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Study every day with Sexy J. My wrist is still fractured, but I'm still working on these things for you guys. See you next time. We're at Quick and Dirty. As promised on, what are we doing today? Yes, we are doing the, listen carefully, it sounds almost the same as the previous one, right? This is the unfamiliar introduction question. Unfamiliar, okay? Unfamiliar, it's the opposite of the one from before, okay? So as you guys know, this is on the research notes, which are at the end of the new digital SAT, right? These are very unique to the digital SAT. I haven't really found any other test that does questions like this. So these are weird, that's why we're doing them, because a lot of people have asked about them. Okay, let's get right to it. So. Um, the beginning of it is the same as what we always do, which is we're going to read the text. No, we never read the text, right? We always read the question itself and pretty easy to recognize, introduce, unfamiliar. So this is unfamiliar introduction question, dot. Okay, next, it's the same as the previous one up to this point. We have to introduce John Miner's book. Okay, so do any of these not mention John Miner's book? Let's see, ah, it looks like this mentions it, but notice it doesn't have the word book, okay? When SAT says introduce the book, you have to say 
this guy's book, blah, blah, blah. It's that straightforward. So answer choice C is immediately out, okay? And the second part of it, it, now it's literally the opposite. So it's, I would recommend you guys watch this video and the familiar introduction video kind of back to back and compare them to each other. So uh, to make sure that you don't mix these up, okay? I need unfamiliar, okay? So if the audience is unfamiliar with this, I need to tell them about it, right? So if I were to all of a sudden talk about epigenetics in this um, video, I will probably have to tell you guys what epigenetics are because my channel doesn't cover epigenetics, it's not a biology channel, okay? And if you guys know epigenetics, good. It's a good topic to write about in college essays if you want to be research-based. Anyway, going back to here. If it's unfamiliar, it needs to tell us about it, okay? So look at answer choice A. It just says the blog. If it says the blog, okay, what's on the blog? So for this unfamiliar one, this actually takes a little bit more strategy. If I'm unfamiliar with the Brzezinski watch, what I need to do, find out about Brzezinski watch. Which one of these bullet points talks about Brzezinski watch? These two, okay? So it needs to have something of those two bullet points. Okay, my wrist is fractured. I'm not too good at using this thing. Got it, okay. I need something from those two bullet points. Okay, so this one just says the blog. This one doesn't have any of those points from here, okay? So I kind of, actually, let's go back to comparing A and D. That's probably a better strategy. A and D, I made them on purpose because, well, I make all of these on purpose, right? They sound super similar. Like what is even the difference between A and D? A is the information in D out of order. Out of order is a very common trap that you guys should be looking for, okay? So um, let's look at this one. Oh, and this other thing, Fred Sheeran which sounds like a real person that you know, right? This does it all the time, guys. Um, if you guys look at the research notes question, because I also want to cover research notes in general, because this is very unique, okay? One of these bullet points, right? One of these bullet points will be totally irrelevant, okay? So be very, very willing and even looking for this, just disregarding one of the bullet points, okay? So things like this, one of the things was blank. These don't really matter. So let's get to what is the answer. And the answer here is D. Why is that? Well, number one, does it introduce the book? The book, Famous Wrist and Brzezinski by John Minor, covers celebrities who are featured in Brzezinski Watch. Okay, what does this book do? It covers celebrities. Cool, okay. And what is the blog on? It is focused on watch brands, watchmaking, and market trends. Now, if I put it together like that, you may be like, oh, that all makes sense when you say it like that. But how would I really know for sure this is the answer when all of these things kind of sound alike? Okay, so please work. Uh, I'm kind of yelling at my bones for not healing faster. I am taking calcium supplements, but I don't know if they're working right. Okay, I've erased the whole thing. Okay, so we need to have Brzezinski watch and also need book, right? So then I need these things. Okay, again, I am getting rid of Fred Sheeran. Sorry, Fred. Yeah. So I need something that encompasses all four of those things. Why do I need all of them? Because they were unfamiliar, okay? So I gave you many strategies to do this, but this is the last thing I'm gonna leave you with, okay? If the question is unfamiliar introduction, it should use minimum three out of the five bullet points. Most likely it'll use four of the bullet points, four out of the five. Is it always five bullet points? Yes, okay? So that's my answer, because it uses four out of bullet points is the quickest way to do it, okay? Now, if you want to be really, really certain, then you go, okay, does it introduce the book? Yes, it does, because it refers to these two. Does it talk about the blog? Yes, it does, because it talks about those two, and that's my answer. So we're going to keep going with this series on the student research notes. Why? Because these are unique to the digital SAT. So they are more on the way. If you guys would prefer to see a different type of question sooner, then let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching and subscribing, and I've been... Pretty excited about the channel because we're nearing a thousand subscribers. I know I said this in the last video, but I'll let you guys know something special can make them works. I haven't figured it out yet. See you guys next time. Study every day with Sexy J. That's the best way. Y'all already know. Bye bye. New digital SCT question time, and this is the cross text question. Why? As always, because y'all been asking for it, right? So I've actually looked through every cross-sex question that's in the blue book so far, as well as some uh, Khan Academy questions, and I have 
dissected the pattern for you guys. So this is the most common type of pattern. So let me give you a little bit of background on these because I haven't done them before, okay? Number one, if you are coming from paper SAT and you guys remember doing double passage, do apply those principles to these questions. What are those principles? I'll get to them in a second. And number two, these are going to be not that many in a test. So, so far, I've only seen this come up once on the entire test, okay? So not in module one and module two, it'll just be on one of them. And it'll be either number eight, nine, or 10. So like that range-ish. That's why I made this number nine, okay? So the most common type of this um, cross-text question is, da -da 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 -da, drum roll. Okay, that wasn't that dramatic. Okay, so it's going to be response. Okay, I'll write that somewhere. Excuse my already atrocious handwriting. Okay, so there are many wordings that could let you know this is a response, which is, what would he say? How would he respond? How would he characterize? And almost all of these are pretty much this. What would text two say about text one? Okay, that's it. That's the most common type of cross-text question, okay? And if you guys are familiar with paper SAT, or even if you're not, I'll just tell you guys this. The most common, actually so far on every single response question, it's been this, I disagree, okay? Now, what is it? Oh, what about agreement questions? Literally, if it's an agreement question, it'll say, what would they agree on, okay? So unless they say, what do they agree on? They disagree, okay? The default setting is that text two disagrees with something about text one. He just doesn't like something about it. He's hating, okay? So as always, do we read through all of this wall of text that I typed through my broken fingers? No, I don't, I don't care, okay? So let's go here. How would the author of text two most likely characterize text one's blah, 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 blah? Okay, what would text two say about text one? Again, it's disagreement. Okay, so what can I immediately, immediately eliminate? Yeah, B. It is reasonable, but no, I don't agree, okay? If I'm saying it's reasonable, that means I agree, okay? I have to disagree, I have to find some fault, flaw, problem, whatever with it, okay? So that's out, okay? And D, it's surprising is a little too weak, okay? So this is, I'm gonna give you guys the probability. You could leave surprising as like, well, I don't know if that's agreement or disagreement, but the pattern I've seen so far in every bullet book, blue book, and Khan Academy question is there has to be a stronger disagreement, okay? Now, if College Board uh, decides to throw us a curveball, or if you guys take the June test or uh, the future test, and you guys see something that breaks that pattern, please let me know and I'll make sure to tackle that. But so far, it has been very clear cut disagreement. So the answer is either A or C. It is unreasonably blah, blah, blah. It is excessively blah, blah, blah. Now I actually have to read. But as you guys already know, these quick and dirty videos are also allowing you to save time and also when you guys are panicking. So let's say you're running out of time or you understood nothing about this passage. You just go, okay, it's a response question. They have to disagree. I'm down to A and C. I can just move on, okay? Now let's actually look at the main point. So passage one says blah, 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 blah. Okay. The main point of all of these texts are going to be closer to the conclusion than in the beginning. Okay. Let's look here. Uh, right here. The very last sentence. An exciting discovery has been made. I don't care about the rest. Okay. So passage one or text one says there's an exciting discovery. What is text two going to say before we've been looking at it? This story is actually not that exciting, or maybe it's just bad, okay? Doesn't have to be um, that level of disagreement. It could be either one. It's not that exciting, or it's actually a stupid discovery, whatever, okay? So text two, what does it say about the discovery? Let's see. The word still. As you guys know from my other videos, right? Whenever I have a contrast, on the other hand, however, yet, or still, my main, co my main point, main coin, main point comes after, right? So like, oh yeah, that dress looks lovely, but... Yeah, I don't think that's for you. What's that? You should not buy that dress. That's my main point. That's the one after, okay? The team cautions that the compound most likely behaves quite differently in humans than it does in protists, okay? So it's quite different and it is unclear, okay? So text one says there's some type of exciting discovery. Text two says, but it's probably different and it's also unclear. What is this? Now, if I get deeper into this, it's this science more work to be done. That's a very common sentiment in the research passages. Okay, so which one of these questions says text two thinks text one discovery is not that exciting. Okay, it's not that exciting. 
The answer here is not A. It is unreasonably dismissive. Text one is not dismissive. A text one is excited. So let's see. It is excessively optimistic. Why? Because it, it thought it was exciting. Okay. So, and then the rest of it, you guys can read through. I would appreciate it if you guys actually read these passages because I write them. But this is what you can do to kind of break down. Oh, let me give you guys like an algebra kind of formula way of doing it. Okay. So when it's text two response to text one, it's this. Okay. Text one thinks blah. Okay. Text two says it's wrong. That's it. Okay. So what is that? Text one thinks this is exciting. Text two says it's not exciting. That's it. Okay. So that just gets, what is it? Paraphrase, right? Paraphrase. That could almost be my catchphrase for SAT because we do it every single test, right? So yeah, the exciting just turns optimistic and we are just denying that. We are hating. We're generational haters. And that's what we have on the cross text question on the SAT. Okay. So the next video is going to be on the exception to this, which is more rare. That's going to be on the cross text agreement. But again, that is the exception. The cross text questions are going to by default to be called response. They can be called, uh, what would he say? How would he characterize? Um, what would he respond with? All of those are going to be, he's going to disagree. Okay. So that's it for today's question, guys. And thank you for letting me know you guys want the cross text questions because who else is going to do these but me? Probably nobody else. Okay. See you guys next time. Study every day with Sexy J. That's the best way. Y'all already know. Bye bye. We're back at it with what I told you guys we would do cross text question agreement. Okay. And these are the exception, not the rule, as I said at the end of last class. Is this last class? Yeah, sure. Well, we'll call these classes. Okay. So let me adjust my, no, that's not how you do this. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So this one is again, cross text. And you guys might say, I've never seen this type of question because the cross text questions are very rare. There are only one per test. And on the Bluebeck test, they haven't done this yet, but you guys know Digital SAT College Board has teamed up with Khan Academy, right? So these are in the Khan Academy questions. And I have to dig a little bit to kind of get, um, access and an idea of what these are about, but you guys wanted it, so I'll do it, right? So this is text one, text two. Again, this is not very common. How do you know it's an agreement question? You guys watched my last video, right? Thank you. Because it says agree, <laughs> right? That's it, okay? So if they ask about what, what would they agree on, it's an agreement question. Cool. And the identification of the question should be that simple, really. So these are going to be, let me try writing not the main point, okay? So if you guys remember from paper SAT, when I have double passages, right? They mostly disagree on stuff, okay? So what is the little thing they have in common? Not their main argument, okay? So for instance, if I have one passage that says, we should not have any more slave states. The second passage says, we should have more slave states. Then what do they agree on? Slave states exist. That type of nothing statement, and as you guys know, nothing statements are great for SAT answers, right? But that type of nothing statement is especially likely and almost always the answer for agreement questions. So up to that point is the same as the paper SAT. Now, I would argue this is even easier. Why? Because these are so much shorter. Look at this, All right? It's like, oh, did you just get lazy and only know this is actually the length of the question that I've seen. Text one, it's like, what, two, three sentences? Okay. And text two is a little bit more. Yeah. So I'm not going to look at those two. Okay. I actually, let's then, you guys already know extreme answers are bad, right? And I just said extreme answers are especially bad for this. I have to go to a nothing answer. And so as I've been doing, what do you guys think is the wrong answer? What can we eliminate right away? What's terrible, atrocious, unbearable? C. Why? Because of the word most. It's the most iconic. That's a very strong statement. I don't like strong statements. Okay, so that's up. Yeah, so I want to get rid of any type of judgmental opinion in these, okay? And as you guys know, as always, these are the quickest way to do it. If you want to actually read through the text, understand everything and do the questions, you can do that. And in fact, I would recommend you guys do that in your daily life to get your reading up. Well, when you're really taking the test and you want to make sure you're doing it the most efficient way, this is the way I would recommend. Okay. So the answer here is going to be not C because it has the word most. That's too extreme. Okay. 
And let's see. Um, all of these things, out of these, which ones do you think is most likely? You guys could probably guess if you guys are a seasoned watchers of Sexy J. Okay. So for this, let's just look at text one. What's, what is text one saying? This one is saying that um, his mythical good. Okay. But pretty much these are saying something is good, something is bad. Okay. My handwriting is atrocious, but I don't really care. Okay. This one is saying that, uh, what is, oh, mundane. Good. Okay. Those are the summaries of the passage. Mythical good, mundane good for this uh, second one. Okay. So let's look at the answer choices and let's look at the traps. Okay. Mythical figures have a story tradition in the art of painting. That's wrong. And how do they lay the traps, guys? As you guys always know, they took the words from the passage that seem related. Like, did I talk about mythical figures in them? Yeah. Um, do we have the art of painting? Yes. What's missing? Do I have any mention of tradition in either of these texts? No. It just sounds like it's vaguely related. That's all. Okay. So this, you can just use your regular elimination tips that you guys know from watching, I don't know, hopefully all my videos, right? Um, and then let's look at answer choices B and D. Okay. D, this is also very common, guys. They will. Um, this is a reverse a statement. So D is a very good illustration of two principles here. And also, this is... Okay. So if you look at D, false paintings of mundane life overshadow his other paintings. That is the reverse of the main argument in text two. Therefore, number one, text, if it's the reverse of text two, then text two would disagree, right? Duh. Number two, it is an argument. I don't like arguments. So the answer here is just B. False works possess a degree of diversity in the subjects depicted. You guys are picking up on that. How unnatural does that sound? Well, so what does B mean in regular speech? His works have a bunch of stuff. Okay, so I just need a bunch of stuff. So I have heroes, and I have he also other stuff. Cool. And this one, same thing. We have um, we have uh, the demigods, and we have mundane tasks. So let's focus a little bit on how to do this really quickly. Okay. So I said, um, what do they agree on? These are going to be, again, the nothing statements. Passage one, in summary, says his mythical paintings are amazing. He has other stuff, but the mythical paintings are good. Passage two says the opposite. He has the normal paintings. They're better than the mythical. What do they both agree on? He does mythical and the normal, right? For example, Michael Jordan played basketball and he played baseball. Obviously, he was better at basketball than baseball, right? But everybody would agree he did play both of those sports. That type of thing is going to be on these SAT passages on the cross text, okay? So did he um, paint a bunch of stuff? Yes. Text one and two, they disagree on which stuff was better, but he, they do agree he painted stuff because he's a painter. He paints stuff. That's his job. Yeah. Okay. So that is it for um, today's quick and dirty on the cross text agreement. And I did make this video because it is a very unique type of question. But don't worry about this question too, too much in terms of devoting your time to practice. Why? Because one, I'm good at this, so this would be all the practice you need. Number two, this only comes up once per test, okay? So as always, leave in the comments what you guys want to see covered next. And if you guys want to see anything non-SAT related, that's also welcome. I just started writing some poetry and non-fiction and fiction. So anything literature nerd would also be cool because I want to nerd out on stuff, okay? Uh, see you guys next time. Study every day with Sexy J. That's the best way. Bye-bye. Hi, hey, it's XJ. Quick and dirty time, digital SAT. What did you guys want? Central idea. A lot of people have been asking about central idea, so I'm actually going to do a series on central idea because central idea depends on what type of passage it is. So today's is going to be, as you guys can maybe see on the screen, central idea, important person. That is a terminology I made up, central idea, important person. What is that? That means the point of this little paragraph is to say this person did an important job in something. Yeah. So here is the text. And as always, we're not going to be needing all of the text. And what we're going to be focusing on is the trap answers. How do they formulate that? So when I recognize that a central idea, all the central idea questions are like this. The trap answers, even more so than the other types of questions, will have exact wording from the passage that is true. But just because something is true doesn't mean it is a central idea of the text, right? So 
Um, let's look at this. If you look at answer choice B, for instance, Finland's seasons allowed Tibelius to be the pioneer political resistance through music. That is totally true. That's literally what the first sentence says. Yeah. So that is the number one trap I would say to look out for. They really like to do, they put in the first sentence and put it into the trap answer because the first sentence, it's the first thing. So it's about to catch your eye. So they know that. Okay. So for these types of things, guys, and actually you guys should know, where is the mania I do the text? Right. You guys have seen my other videos right? in the old SAT or the paper SAT or the ACT. When you do reading, the main idea is going to be in the conclusion paragraph. You may say, well, Jay, isn't this one paragraph? Same idea applies. My central idea is much, 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 much more likely to be at the end than in the beginning. So the beginning thing that is exactly from the text, very, very likely to be the trap. OK, so um, my main idea is going to be probably here. OK. So yeah, I'm kind of giving you guys a hint here. And as I was saying before, this is about an individual. When I have people's names, it's going to be, this person was important and they did a good job. Never ever, this was on my previous videos, this was like, you have to be nice to real people or something like that, right? Never ever will we have an SAT passage just trashes on an individual. They're not gonna be like, this person's artwork was mid and they should get punished for how terrible they are. They don't do that, okay? So let's look at these things and Answer choice D, therefore, okay, first of all, it's not even in the passage, right? Nowhere in the passage, but they still do that because um, these are based on actual College Board uh, Blue Book questions. Look at this. Uh, the primary contributor is debated. That doesn't say, look how good I am at writing with a broken wrist. Doesn't say anything positive. Okay, if it's a central idea, important person, question, it has to say something positive about a person. Wow, good job, that person is amazing. So that's that. So it's going to be either A or C. A says he played a central role and C says the majority was done by this guy. So which one is it, guys? Well, as always, I need exact textual evidence. Is C said in the text, even with paraphrase, do I have a synonym for the word majority? No, I don't. So my answer here is A. Now, where did it come from? Well, it came from central role, crucial, okay? So that's where it comes from. So let me give you guys this a further breakdown. We're approaching the end of this um, concept. When I have an important person, central idea question on the digital SAT, the important person is going to be the second half of the text. And it's going to be this person made a very major contribution to whatever field. It could be art, it could be music, it could be science. I don't care, but that's what it is. And that's answer choice A. But check played a central role and influenced the content and popularization of Finland seasons. Notice it doesn't even say what that person did. It just says the person's important. And as you guys know, the weaker the answer, the better it is. Okay. So that's the central idea question, as you guys have many of you been asking for. And stay tuned for more central idea questions. We're going to be covering science central idea and uh, discovery research, a uh, whole bunch of things, just because this is the advanced question you guys have been asking for. And we just hit 1,000 subscribers. So yay. Thank you guys. I just want to say thank you again. Love you guys. Study every day with who? With me, Sexy J, the best way you guys already know. Bye bye. What is today's about? This one is about scientific discovery, scientific discovery. Okay. So this runs very similar to if you guys have been watching my other videos of just scientific discoveries in the paper SAT as well. So let's look at this format first. So I know normally we jump right to the questions, right? But you notice here that this is a main idea question and now I have to actually identify what type of passages it is. So if I start with, this is very, very key. If I start with for decades, for centuries, for years, or um, the popular idea has been. So this beginning thing is the old idea. So this thing is what people used to believe. And in my scientific discovery passage and question, my main point is this is what people used to think, but here is some new information. Obviously there is no point in telling you what people already know and like, yeah, that's correct. Like if you go, if you shoot a chicken in the head, it will die. Well, yes, right. That's, there's no point in that, but there was a chicken that was, uh, it had its head chopped off, but it survived. 
and it got its own museum, right? Did I solve that chicken before? I don't know. But so you that chicken survived, right? So that was contrary to expectation. So that's why you talk about it, right? Or we might have things like people think dinosaurs are stupid and dumb. Actually, they're smart and they're fast and whatever. Okay. So this here is going to be for decades of blah blah blah. That stuff is not the main main idea. If it's included in the main idea, it's going to be yeah they thought that, but it's something else. So let's look here. What is the main idea of the text? So it's going to be this key right here now. So my main idea is going to combine both of these. Okay. For decades, people used to think blank. Now we discover it blank something else. Okay. So take a second, as always, I'm not going to pause myself, but take a second to look through the answer choices and see which one you guys might guess. You guys tried it, right? And you guys, you know, just press space, pause it. Okay, so let's look at these things. The recent identification of a connection between endothermia and ETZ confirms. I hate that phrase. I hate that phrase. I mean, I don't hate it in real life, but as you guys know, in the SAT, especially in science, science and confirms is a terrible answer choice. Also, the word proves, but they don't even use that because they know that's terrible. Confirm and prove that is way too strong and way too certain. For example, we have things that support our theory of gravity. But even with gravity, gravity exists, right? Like, can I drop this? Not my pencil, but okay. You know, that works, right? It happens. Gravity is real. But even with that, we don't say gravity is proven. We just don't use that language, okay? So that one is out. Um, and then this one looks like an... Uh, digital SAT has actually gotten a little bit more cunning and tricky than the paper SAT because they know that B, look at that wording, recent discoveries have challenged widely accepted theories. They know that we know that's usually how these passages go, right? So this format is very, very good trap answer, okay? So, but what's missing here? Well, what's the discovery? So I'm not even going to get into whether this answer choice is correct or not in terms of the text. But again, it has to be, we used to think A, but we discovered B. It doesn't say what we discovered. You have to say what we discovered. Okay, so B is that. So now we're between C and D. Okay. And C is also not bad in terms, again, the formatting of it. It traditionally was this, but recent progress has led to greater insight. Two things. One, we are not told what the greater insight is. Number two, it says procedural limitations. Was that in the passage? No, it wasn't in there at all, not even in terms of paraphrase. So what did they do? Digital SAT is a little bit trickier than paper SAT because are they watching my videos? I hope not. Maybe. I don't really care. Okay. But they know that people know these patterns because of people like me. I don't know who else is out there like me, but you know, the patterns are there to be analyzed. So they're making answer choices B and C that are exactly like the pattern they used to use for a right answer. So be extra careful on those guys. So how do I eliminate it? Again, progress of procedures or procedural limitations, not in the passage at all, even when we take into account synonyms or paraphrase. So that leaves us with D. Look how long this is. So endothermy has primarily been thought of as, so that's what we used to think. And is this the correct thing? Activity levels? Yes, right here. Okay, then. But new findings show that it may also have other benefits, okay, which are immune response and learning. Where is that? Immune response and learning. And some connection to hormonal regulation. Hormonal regulation right here. Yeah. So that looks like a lot of marking and a lot of work. But this is, even by College Board, they admit this is an advanced question. This is in the advanced section of the reading and writing on Khan Academy, officially, you know, collaborating with College Board. So with these central idea questions, you have to identify what passage it is. And this one is a science research passage. So the main idea of the text is going to be, we used to think blank, but now, thanks to recent discoveries, we have found out something else and something else. And that's it. So that's it for today's Quick and Dirty. As I've been saying, guys, we will continue with the central ideas. Thank you so much for letting us know in the comments you guys uh, wanted this done. And keep the comments coming. Whatever you guys want to see covered, I will get on it. Digital SAT or whatever it is that uh, pertains to college admissions for the United States. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Study every day with SexJ. That's the best way. Y'all already know. Bye-bye. Today's um, topic is the inference question. Why? Because you guys have been asking for it. And it is also one of the more difficult questions. So today's passage is 
made by yours truly, as always. And it's an inference question. And the SAT does not actually use the word inference anymore. So um, those of you who've been doing the paper SAT, you would know it can reasonably be inferred was the language they use for inference. They used to. But they don't do that anymore, but they still call it inference. So what do they say instead? As you guys know, do you read this first? Of course not, right? You, you go right to the directions that says, which choice most logically completes the text? Most logically completes the text. It doesn't have the word inference, but that's what SAT is calling it with their official language. This is the inference question on the digital SAT. Okay. So <clears throat> what should we do? This is, again, up to you guys. If you guys are OK with the timing on the digital SAT, you could read through the whole thing. And that's not a bad idea. But if you're rushed for time, this stuff here, you can skim. And <clears throat> it's really right here and maybe the sentence before. So as we've been doing with these digital SAT questions, you want to look at the last sentence of the passage and maybe the sentence before. And let's see uh, how much you guys have been keeping up with the videos. Where do we see a really important indicator in the last sentence? Dramatic pause. OK, it's however. Yeah. Whenever I say however, but, or in contrast, you guys are familiar with this, right? I'm saying my main point afterward, right? Like when I was in high school, I went to this girl's house to ask her for prom, blah, 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 right? And she's like, oh, Jay, this is really sweet, blah, blah, blah. However, I'm going with somebody else. It's OK. I think she's married to somebody else now. Anyway, so like the however, the stuff that comes after is my main point. So right here, rabbit induced soil displacement can promote loss. All I want to figure out is, OK, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Because they don't actually need you to know real science on SAT reading. They really don't, OK? So let's say I don't know what biodiversity is, although you should. You should. It's important, right? But even if I don't, it's loss of diversity and also it's accelerating disease. Wow, that's really bad, right? So my answer here is um, suggesting that the kicking action habits, rabbits, is bad. But we're not done there, OK? Because we notice the word however and also the word but. Because I've gone through the Khan Academy inference questions, right? They always use the word but a lot, right? That means I have to have a contrast. So if I say something is bad, what's the contrast? Good. So good is bad. That sounds dumb, but it's going to be something like good, but sometimes bad. That's my main idea, okay? So from, again, two things. From the fact that we had negatives in the last sentence and from the fact that we had the word however, that means it must be a contrast. How do you have a contrast with a negative? These things were good. These things are bad. That's my contrast. Okay. Um, if you want, you guys can read through this. I would appreciate if you did, because I typed this up with my broken wrist. It's getting better. Thanks, guys. Uh, oh, thanks for the well wishes, by the way. Okay. But let's just jump right to the questions. Okay. <coughs> so you can immediately, immediately eliminate which ones? C and D. That's right, guys. Good job. Why? Because I just said it has to be these things are good. However, these things are bad. I don't have good or bad in these two answer choices. So C and D are out. And Sexy J subscriber, you guys probably already were on top of that. So now we have to choose between A and B. Okay. So is it the small but large or is it the location that causes the badness? Okay. This is now when I finally decide to read the passage. You do not need to read the passage beforehand. So now I will, let me uh, get rid of some of this for you, clean it up. Now I will figure out and go back and see what's the thing that causes things to be good or bad. Is it the small diversity versus large diversity or is it the location? Well, right here. At the edges of the fields, it's bad. So at the edges of the fields, it's bad. So when is it bad? When it's at the edge, is that a location? Yes, it is. So my answer here is uh, B. Again, I, and as I say this, like every single passage, right? You didn't really need any of these words at all, okay? So you guys can read them if you feel more comfortable having uh, more of a sense of what's going on. But I also want to advise you guys, if I read this and I don't understand what's going on because I don't know the science, that's perfectly fine, guys. You don't have to know science for SAT uh, reading and writing, okay? So that's our inference question, guys. So to sum up, we can tell it's an inference question when <coughs> my voice Excuse me. You can tell it's an inference question when? When you see the phrase, most logically completes the text. Then you look at the last sentence. Up to here, same thing, right? And then you look for what is the relationship with the rest of the passage. Most typically, it'll be a however in contrast or a but. So you're looking for it was good, but it was bad. Or it was busy, but it was fine. 
you know, some type of contrast, right? That's it, guys. Um, that's it for today's Quick and Dirty. And again and again, do not be intimidated by the uh, digital SAT passages seeming like they're difficult or fancy or scientific. Don't worry about that, okay? And the next two videos that are coming up, especially targeted for August SAT takers, only from the advanced section of the SAT reading and writing as determined by College Board. See you guys next time. Thank you all the time. And study every day with who? Sexy J. That's the best way. Bye-bye. Hi, hey, it's XJ. Quick and dirty time on yet another essential idea question. Why are there so many? Because there are so many on the SAT, right? So this is especially for you guys who are taking the test in August because y'all been studying all summer, so you want to get the score you want. That's why you're here, right? So I have many more videos coming your way on the most advanced questions on the SAT reading and writing. Why do I call them advanced? Because that's what College Board and Cod Academy call them, okay? So these are straight from their classification. So today's central idea question is, and this is going back to my other central idea questions as well. So with the central idea, what you have to do is you need to recognize what type of passage is this. So we've had central ideas on scientific discovery. We've had central ideas on important person. This one is central idea, culture, okay? Culture is my terminology that I'm using because my terminologies work, okay? So as you guys probably are able to tell, SAT will not say things that are controversial at all. So if I mention any aspect of culture, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be jazz music, it could be country music, it could be the opera, it could be um, Chinese uh, lion dancing, doesn't matter. Every single time we mention something cultural, we're going to admire that culture, okay? We are never, ever, ever going to criticize any type of cultural thing, okay? Any type of art, any type of statue, any type of dance, doesn't matter. We love it, okay? We will never offend any culture from any heritage on SAT. Never, okay? So, so you look here. Country is often a um, ridiculed music genre. So notice here, I am actually looking at the first line, which we rarely do. But from here, I know that this is about culture, okay? So we start with country is often ridiculed. So we know we're going to do a 180, okay? It's often ridiculed, but it's actually really good. So that's how these culture ones go, guys. It might not be the most celebrated by some people, but actually the smart people, aka the scholars, the people we should listen to, they think this thing is amazing, okay? So let's look here. Um, scholars have argued that the genre is far more complex than many people think. So this one should be country music is really, really good. Okay, so let's look here. The last sentence, which as always is actually the most important. What does the text most strongly suggest about country music genre? Going back to the last sentence, let's see. The genre's greatest songs have deep meaning. So the actual, actual central idea of this passage is country music has deep meaning. Does that mean SAT is going to give that to you as an answer? Probably not because they want things to be difficult because they want people to get things wrong. So let's look through here and eliminate anything that says bad stuff about country music, okay? So, A, it has fallen off. Mm -mm, it has not fallen off. And we know that from back out of, they're not gonna say something bad. But also, lasting popularity, it's popular still. Okay, so that's out. Uh, something like D, it changed through time from a shallow, uh-uh, we're not gonna say it was bad in the past either, okay? So in real life, it could be, oh, this wasn't that good in the beginning, but now it's great. But on the SAT, when I mention a culture, nope, it's always been good since the beginning of time. It's been the most amazing thing ever, okay? So a, D is out because it said it used to be shallow. Nuh uh can't say that, okay? So B and C, look at these wordings, guys. These are super, 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 super likely for a culture question, it's, which is going to be people have said it's bad and people were wrong. Okay, so it's been wrongly criticized, unjustly criticized, unduly criticized, all mean the same thing, okay? So that's my main key. If it's culture, it's been unduly, unjustly, wrongly criticized, okay? So let's look at these two, and out of these two, which one do you guys think is better? I don't know why I keep pausing myself, but it's a habit. By now, you guys get used to it, okay? It's going to be not be. Why? Because, first of all, we have the word most. Why is the word most bad? 
Yeah, right, because it's over half. Over half, that's extreme. Extreme answers are bad. You guys already know that, okay? Second, it's been dismissed by most scholars. That is a pretty harsh diss to the genre. Country music's been di dismissed by over half of the scholars out there. That's a pretty strong attack. So even if I say, oh, it's being wrongly dismissed, no. It's going to be scholars like it, okay? Uh, let me erase some of that so you guys can see it more easily. Okay, what do we have from the text? Scholars have argued that the genre is far more complex than people think. So it's people might think it's not good, but scholars, the people we respect, the authority, the guys who know best, quote unquote, they think it's good, okay? So my answer here is C. It's been unjustly criticized for inclusion of subjects that are not unique to the genre. Where is that? That's coming from, let me erase a lot of that. Right here. And at this point, I haven't said this today, but I say this every single time, right? What is the most important skill you need for SAT reading? Paraphrase, 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 yeah. So subjects that are present in other genres as well, by the way. So subjects that are present in other genres just get paraphrased into subjects that are not unique to the genre, okay? So I have the first part, it's been unfairly criticized. That's almost there. That's almost always there for the culture. Second one, subjects that are unique to the genre is just a paraphrase of the, this phrase right here, okay? So to sum up, these questions are harder. Yes, that's why they're in the advanced question category according to College Board and Khan Academy. So this one I can't do like I normally do by just reading the last two lines. So what do I have to do? I have to first recognize that it's a culture passage and then also know that they're gonna say something very positive about it. And it's usually gonna go into a uh, line of, it's been unfairly criticized for this, but scholars actually think it's good because of this, okay? So I get rid of anything that's negative and that leaves us with C, okay? Thanks for watching guys. I have more videos coming for you, August test takers and everybody else. Whatever test you guys are gonna take, I'll be here, guys. Thank you for coming to the channel. Study every day with Sexy J. That's the best way. Y'all already know. Bye bye. Quick and dirty time, yet another central idea question, again for August SAT test takers. So, why are we going through so many of these? Because these are more advanced and you guys want them. And you guys need to know this for the test. That's everything on the channel, right? So how do I recognize the central idea question? Let's look at, as always, what the question asks. What does the test most strongly suggest about whatever? Any of the questions that are pretty much, what does the text say about something? That's central idea. What does the text say about blank? That is central idea, okay? And now, about ants that produce a strong pheromone. We know from that that this is a science phenomenon question. So this is central idea, science, phenomenon, question. That's what it is. Central idea, science, phenomenon. So this is a little bit different from science discovery. Science discovery is they find out something that we didn't know before. Okay. So it's like, oh, we didn't know this. Recent discovery. Wow. Good job. This one, science, phenomenon, is a little bit more boring. It's just what you would find in a textbook. This is what happens in nature. Okay. So for the science phenomenon question, this is going to be one of the questions that really, really carries this principle to the fullest, which is less extreme the answer, the better. The less extreme the answer, the better. That means they will really want to do the wrong answers being a little bit too extreme, and that's why they're wrong, okay? Because these science passages, the science phenomenon, there isn't that many, uh, there isn't a lot of like complexity to them. It's just information that's being delivered to you straightforward. This is why once I recognize scientific, scientific phenomenon, I have to watch out the most. The simpler the passage, the more trickier the uh, answer choices are likely to be, okay? So take a second to read through this. I'll read through it, right? You can pause the screen and read, okay? So what are we asking about? We're asking about ants that produce a strong pheromone. Now, my actual answer would be ants that produce a strong pheromone are trying to bring back the aphids, they're trying to provide defense, blah, blah, blah. Just like in the other central idea questions, the actual central idea is probably not gonna be the answer because that's how College Board is. Love you guys. Um, so, let's look here. These ants are more likely to thrive than darker ants were. Well, what happened? So the word however is important. In case of environmental disturbance. So, I know all the stuff here is happening because there was some type of trouble. If there's some type of trouble, why would they be thriving? 
Yeah. Okay. So that one is out. And let's see. Um, also this one. Because. So this they do a lot. Okay. Attempt to recover. Is not the same thing as recovered. So in the text we had, these ants are trying to recover from some type of bad thing. Does that mean that they succeed in doing that? Well, you know, I broke my wrist like eight weeks ago or something like that, right? I'm attempting to recover, but it still doesn't bend. You see that? Like it's supposed to bend. It doesn't bend, okay? Or, you know, I'm attempting to get, I don't know, guys, what's our goal? 50,000 subscribers, something like that? Maybe? I don't know, okay? We're attempting to get there. Are we there? No, we're just a humble channel at the moment, right? My brother is attempting to be a millionaire. Hope he gets there, you know. He said he'll buy me a car. Anyway, attempt to recover is not the same thing as recovered, right? Any attempt is not the same thing as success, okay? So that's why answer choice B is there because it says they're trying to recover, right? Did they succeed? I don't know, okay? So that's out, okay? So I took out both of them, uh, A and B. Now let's look at C and D. Which one of these is better? You guys can probably guess at this point. Can you? Maybe. Yeah. So the answer here is C, because they have likely been subjected to stressful environmental conditions. Stressful environmental conditions just comes from environmental disturbance. That's it, right? It doesn't add any more information than what was in the text. That's it. Very minimum, non-extreme, nothing answer, okay? Whereas answer tree is D, they're more susceptible to damage from strong acids. Okay, we do have acid, because they here. Where do I have damage from acid? Nowhere, okay? So this is the thing that you want to watch out for. You're like, oh, it had the word acid, it had the word defense, so I thought maybe, stop yourself there, okay? If I'm going, I thought maybe, you're going down the very trap that SAT set for you, okay? Don't do that, okay? All I want to do is just take this phrase, just take it, and put it in the answer choice, okay? Take it, put it in there, yeah. That was kind of painful. Anyway, so it's a scientific phenomenon question. Like I said, very little complexity to these questions. You want to go with the answer choice that says as least information as possible, okay? So all I know is, okay, when bad stuff happens, the ants do this. How do I know it's bad stuff? Environmental disturbance. That turns into stressful, stressful environmental conditions. That's it. Environmental disturbance, stressful conditions. That is it. You no know more thinking. That's it. Even though this is supposed to be an advanced question, it's a central idea of science phenomenon, okay? So as you guys know, Make sure you identify what question it is and then adjust your approach accordingly, according to my videos, right? Our videos. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Study every day with me, Sexy J. That's the best way. Y'all know. Bye bye. Hi, hey, it's XJ. Quick and dirty time on Digital SAT. And we're using the wording that College Board and Khan Academy use. So this is going to be a boundary question, okay? So Because that's what they call it. So it's called boundary. And so if you guys want additional um, resources, you can look that up. But more specifically, this is going to be boundary and dashes. How do you use dashes? College Board loves to put dashes into questions like we do here. And the issue is most schools that um, I ever interacted with, they don't teach you how to use dashes because dashes are a little extra, okay? So I'm not going to say this is when you use the dash and this is when you use a comma or this is when you use something else because that's all literally style points, okay? It's just a stylistic preference. So then how on earth can College Board give you a question with dashes? Because all of the other ones are wrong, okay? So if you look at this problem here, and you know this is a grammar question because that's what this says right here, and notice the four choices here. Uh, we have a colon, we have a comma, we have the no punctuation, and then we have the dash. How would I be able to tell the difference between these? You don't, okay? You don't. When you read these and you see um, semicolon, colon, and dash, those types of punctuations, then I am looking for parentheses, okay? Parentheses. You say, Jay, there are no parentheses in this problem, but what I'm looking for is where could I put parentheses in this sentence? Where could I put parentheses so that I could take out this info and the sentence still works. Okay, so what does that mean? Drawing crafts from all over the world, the Arts and Crafts Festival for Cool People, or ACFCP as the event became known as, this stuff. I could put parentheses around and I could take it out. 
okay? It's additional info, it's extra info. If you guys care about the grammatical terms, it's called a positive, a non-essential clause, a parenthetical clause, I don't really care, okay? So if I have those types of things, then I'm just looking to take that out, okay? And the reason I'm using parentheses is, everybody knows parentheses, right, like in math, if I open the parentheses, I have to close the parentheses. It's the same exact deal with punctuation, okay? There are two ways of dealing with this. So if I have this phrase, I could put a comma here, put the phrase, and then put a comma here. Two commas around it, okay? Or I could put a dash, or I could put a dash. It doesn't matter which one I do. So how do I pick? Do I use a comma or do I use a dash? Look right here, guys. The non-underlying portion is correct. You can't change that. So what do they use here? A dash. So if they use a dash on the right side, you have to use a dash on the left side. Done. So when you're actually taking the test, that's all you would do. Uh, I don't know what should go here. It's either a comma, comma, or a dash, dash. They put a dash, so I put a dash. That's it, guys, okay? So again, don't worry about is a dash better, comma better, blah, blah, blah. They will never pick, make you pick between the two. It's already going to be in the sentence. So in a boundary question, Notice that um, there is parenthetical information, put parentheses around it, and finish the parentheses with whatever matches what was in the sentence, in the non-underlying portion, okay? Uh, that's it for today's Quick and Dirty, guys. Study every day with XJ. Good luck in your test, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Hi, uh, hey, Sexy J, quick and dirty time for August test takers, as we've been doing, right? And today's question type is also a boundary question, but I'm going to today focus on punctuation because schools don't really teach you how to use punctuation properly. I, myself, I went to really good high school because I, I had to test to get into it and everything, but we never learned grammar. When did I learn grammar? In seventh, when I was teaching seventh graders, okay? So today's is punctuation, specifically how to join sentences, okay? So technical um, college board term is boundary, but I'm focusing on boundary and punctuation, okay? So do you guys know how to use a colon? Do you, know, do you guys know how to use a semicolon? All of that, kind of, okay? So before we get to the question here, how do I use a colon, okay? So how do you guys use a colon? 99% of you will say to start a list, and that is wrong, okay? You do not use a colon necessarily to start a list. A colon is like this, okay? So um, uh, I'll just, I like pie, colon. It's my favorite dessert, okay? A colon requires a finished sentence on the left, Okay, and then stuff to the right is stuff that adds to it. That's how you use a colon, okay? So uh, if I do like the listing that everybody thinks that a colon is for, um, this would be wrong. I bought, colon, one, two, three, wrong, terrible, bad. Why? Because I bought is not a finished sentence, okay? Did I really just misspell sentence? I did, jeez. Okay, so how do I say that? I bought a lot of stuff. Colon, and then you could start listing things. One, two, three, and so forth. Yeah? Okay. So that's how we use a colon. And a semicolon is for combining two separate sentences. But you guys usually know what a semicolon is. So I'm not going to get too much into that. If you guys are confused about it, you can ask about it. I'll make another video. Okay? So let's look at this sentence here, guys. So we know it's a grammar question because that's the instruction right there, okay? This stuff over here, I don't care at all, okay? I wrote it, but yeah, I don't care. And also, this is about basketball. SAT is not going to give you anything as interesting as basketball. They just don't, okay? So the actual sentence is here. Three-level scores do not have to excel at all three, however. They are simply capable in each area, thus they're not limited to one area of the court. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that to make it easier to read. Okay, so... One thing I would, I would recommend is you plug in A, not because A is going to be correct necessarily, it's one out of four chance, right? You plug in A and you figure out what's wrong with it, okay? So if I were to plug in A, what's wrong with it? That's a run-on sentence because that's one sentence up to here and you cannot do sentence with just comma. You cannot, okay? So that's out. And, oh, did I really make A and B both the same wrong thing? Yeah, okay. Oh. 
And one option is, I should have made this no comma here. They might just not put in any punctuation. That's still wrong, okay? So the idea here is that I have two sentences. How do I join them? Okay, let me go through the list. How do I join two sentences? One, put a period and start a new sentence. Easiest one, will they test you on that? Yes, because the zero CT is actually easier, okay? Another way, you put a comma and fanboys, and we'll do another video on fanboys, but for and nor but or yet so. Another one, you put a semicolon, another one, you put a colon, okay? So out of all those options, we have two sentences here. What is the best option here? Well, A and B are out because that's a comma and pretend this comma doesn't exist. Those are just run-ons. They have nothing to fix the problem. So we have C and D. Which one do you guys think it is? You guys can probably guess it's going to be the colon one because that's what I've been talking about in this video. Okay. What's wrong with D though? Okay. I put a semicolon. That's two sentences. College Board. This I can say 100%. College Board has never made the correct answer as semicolon with but, okay? When you do semicolon, you don't do a transition, you just start a new sentence, okay? So you don't do any of the fanboys. So my answer here is C, okay? So how does that fit the definition of colon that we talked about? Three level scores do not have to excel at all three, however. They are simply capable in each area. Those aren't so this stuff is added explanation for the first part. Wow, I wrote a lot today. Yeah, because uh, we're going through punctuation and grammar, so I'm writing a little bit more. Okay, guys? So if you have any questions on any type of punctuation, how to use it, and you just never quite got it, you don't know the difference between who versus whom, you don't know when to put an apostrophe, if you have any of those questions, leave a comment in the video, and I will tackle whatever grammar or punctuation usage question you guys have. Okay? So let me know, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Study every day with XJ. That's the best way. You already know. Bye-bye. Today's digital SAT topic is commas, essential clause. But before we get to that, how did you guys do on the August SAT? You guys studied all summer for it. Let me know how it went. And I did hear it was pretty hard from a lot of people, which is actually good news because that means a better curve for you guys, right? So I've been teaching all summer for it. So let me know if there were anything that was like weird, uh, something that you hadn't seen before, leave in the comments so that if you guys are going to take it in October, we have about six weeks. I got you guys, okay? Hope you did well, especially you, Rachel. You made me paint, you painted these nails because these are going to make you do better. I hope you did well. I hope it was worth it. My mom likes these, by the way. Okay, so um, let me know, guys, in the comments. I am really actually, um, as always, looking forward to your feedback, but I am pretty curious about this test as well, okay? So today's um, topic is commas because there are so many things about commas that you just never taught in school. And this is one of those things. And what did I say the topic was today? Yes, essential clause. Did you learn that in school? Because I didn't. Okay. Essential clause. I don't know how to spell anymore. Okay. So you see how A, B, C, and D, they're literally exactly the same words. The commas are just in different places, okay? I do not want you guys to look through these answer choices because if you're rushing through, they can all look the same. Like, I was making this and I was like, wait, are A and D the same thing? They are not. There is a difference of this comma right here. Okay, so ignore the answer choices, guys. Well, I want to look at them as a whole, like broadly. Oh, it's like different because of the placement of the commas. Okay, it's a comma question, okay? So this is really the main question we're going to ask with this. Do I need this info or not okay so long story short if i need the information then no commas okay if i could take it out then you put commas around it those are the only options you either put two commas around the phrase or you put no commas okay therefore if you look at this phrase here a there's only one comma on that side so you guys all know how to use parentheses right if you don't i guess i could make a video on that too but when you make a parentheses, you have this stuff, right? Extra info. And naturally, if I open the parentheses over here, I have to close the parentheses over here. You never just put like this. You know, that bothers me right now. I can't even have that on there. Gross. Okay. So that's the same thing. A just has parentheses or comma on one side. This is also grammatically called a parenthetical phrase. So parentheses. Okay. So A is out. And uh, for the same reason, ew, what is this? C, that's out, let's look at, so this is based on the um, June International SAT uh, because 
you guys have sent me this SAT to kind of work on. So I made my own questions, but this is exactly the type of formatting they're using. Why would you put a comma between two people and an and? You just never do that. In order to do that, how, when do I do that? Exactly, right? You have when you have one, two, comma, and, okay? And three. You guys can count, right? How many things is that? Two. You never put comma, which is two items in a list, with an and, okay? So you don't do that. So you're between B and D. Either I put no commas around the thing, or I put two commas around it, okay? Now, if you're stuck here, guys, and you're like, oh, English is my second language, as a lot of you guys are international students, and you're not confident you're going to have the feel for it, well, you should guess the no commas. That's much, much more true likely, so that's just a you know, probability thing. Now, if I want to be sure, that's why you're on the channel, right? You want to be sure about the grammatical concept. It's, a lot of people say it like this. This is wrong. They say, if you take it out and the sentence still works, no commas. Well, what if I have a sentence like this? The team with more points wins. Okay, so in this sentence, right? The team with more points wins. You, there is no comma around it. You guys can tell there shouldn't be a comma, right? And, but if I take that out, does that sentence still work grammatically? Yes, it does. You could say the team wins. Yes. But you're losing the main point of the sentence. What was the main point of the sentence? To tell you how do you win? Well, you have to score the most points. Okay? So this is a, a better way to think about it. If the information is... Uh, and SAT does not use this wording because that would make it too easier. Need this info, that's almost always identifying info. As in, most commonly, be, who are those people? That's the essential information. Because do you know who John Choi and Esther Kim are? I mean, I know John Choi and Esther Kim because I'm Korean, but like, you know, who are these people? Why are they important, et cetera? I need to know as much information as I can get about them, okay? So it's identifying information that is necessary. So the answer here is B, okay? Because could you grammatically have a sentence that say, cognitive scientists utilize techniques? Sure, but then I'm not telling you who they are. I am missing the identifying information, okay? So very, very specifically, and why am I getting so specific? In this essential clause question, this is almost always how they do it, okay? Like about 90% of the time, it'll be, you don't put commas around it because I need those people's names because it's identifying information. Okay, so that's a lot of information I'm dumping on you guys, but if you know that, it's done, okay? This, these are people, I need their names, no commas, done, okay? Don't re-throw the answer choices, that's too much thinking, okay? You want to do this as simply and quickly, quick and dirty, as possible, okay? So um, that's today's quick and dirty. I am doing more and more grammar and punctuation questions, ex exactly because you guys asked. So as I said before, leave it in the comments, whatever you guys want me to cover. I got you guys, study every day with Sexy J, bye-bye. Today's topic is, what do you guys think? You guys have been asking for a lot of things. Command of evidence, specifically command of evidence scientific, okay? And as you guys know, I'm using the terminology that Khan Academy and College Board is using, so you guys can find additional materials. So, uh, if you guys remember, I've already done a command of evidence question in terms of numbers, so that'd be quantitative, and I've also done it for poetry, which would be literary. So I'm doing the third type here, which is uh, the science, okay? So the first step is going to be, once I recognize this is a command of evidence question, which is, you know, which finding would do whatever, okay? I want to know, is this science, is this literary, or is this numbers? That's pretty easy, right? Literary, you know it's from a novel, or from a poem, or if it's numbers, then it'll have numbers, okay? So this one is going to be the other category. If it's not poetry or literature, it's not numbers, it's scientific, okay? So, or you can just look at the phrase from the study. So I'm trying to look at if true or most directly weak into potential explanation. So I'm going back to kind of the classic method that we've been using, okay? Which is, I don't give a darn about all this stuff at the beginning. I really don't, it doesn't matter, okay? So once I recognize it's a command of evidence question and it's scientific, I just need to look at, well, I wanna weaken the potential explanation. What is the explanation? The explanation is this, okay? So in the science, my explanation goes like this. Uh, okay, um, A causes B. Okay, so let's say uh, I say um, eating popcorn raises SAT score. 
I mean, I wish, right? Yeah. So eating popcorn raises SAT score. So what does that mean? That means that more uh, popcorn goes up. My SAT goes up. That's my hypothesis, probably wrong, right? There's nothing related with popcorn and SAT scores. So how do I prove that to be wrong? There are a number of ways. You could say, well, I ate a lot of popcorn, my scores didn't go up. That's the normal way, right? Or let's say somebody says, oh, my scores went up. I had a lot of popcorn. And you're like, well, you also studied six hours a day. You also watched Sexy Day YouTube, right? And your scores are already high to begin with. All of those things don't matter, right? It's whenever it's something else. That's another way to weaken scientific explanations, okay? So that's the scientific background. Now let's care. One possible reason is that holding physical money causes people to think of it differently than receiving money digitally. Okay. So how would I weaken that? So it's going to be either they didn't hold physical money. Or it's going to be it was something else. So I'm writing a lot today, but let me uh, clarify this concept for you guys, okay? So when I am proving something to be wrong in a science passage, it's going to be at this. They're saying that A causes B. What are two ways to weaken that? Not A or something else. So going back to my popcorn example. Yeah, I ate a bunch of popcorn, my SAT score went up. Dude, you hate popcorn. You never hate popcorn. Oh, you hate popcorn. You never ate popcorn, right? So that would be this one. Not A, didn't eat popcorn, so that can't be true. Or it was something else, which was the other example I gave you, like you guys watch Sexy J, whatever. I mean, not whatever. Thanks for coming, guys. Okay, so let's look here. They wanted holding physical money causes people to think differently. Okay, I need something with holding physical money or not holding physical money. Okay, what do you guys think here? Uh, what weakens it? What weakens it? Okay. So this is the trap that people fall into. This is why I don't even want you to, you guys should read through it just in case, right? But I don't want you to pay attention to this. Cause you see here, the main idea is a form of money made a difference. And a lot of people go like, okay, made a difference. How do you weaken that? Uh, it's uh, this one, cause they do the same thing. That's a common trap, okay? The common trap comes from the middle of the paragraph so, so often. Okay. So um, it's, and then this one is uh, going to be Let's see. So this one just goes up, up with the original idea that these people are different. Okay. And then, um, and this one is also, they are different. Okay. So we're between B and D. And you guys could probably guess since I said B is a common trap answer, right? So B is such a good trap answer because you just go, oh, because difference. So to weaken it, I want to do same. And this is it. That is a trap. Okay. I know I'm saying it twice. That is a trap. I don't care about the stuff in the middle, really. It's just this. They just said, holding physical money makes you act different. Well, we could it. They didn't have physical money, right? Or they had physical money, one of the two. So it's D, okay? Almost all digital transfer recipients withdrew their entire receipt money right after receiving the transfer. Why is that? Let me clear the board a little bit. Can I call this a board? Does that make me sound old? Okay. So. The idea was holding physical money act, makes you act different. But that can't work if everybody had physical money. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can't be like, oh, I did worse on the SAT because it was in English. SAT is always in English, right? Yeah. So to summarize, guys, it was, um, why do I lose? Oh, yeah, there we go. They said physical money made a difference was the claim. And then. But this was not different. And that's my thought process, okay? So my answer here is D. That is a very well-made trap answer. I'm not saying I made it well. This is based on what College Board uses Khan Academy in the blue book, right? So when I have a scientific um, command of evidence question, don't get distracted by the stuff in the middle. Just go to the end and just look for what variable are they claiming makes a difference? And then if it was the same, then it can't make a difference, okay? My eraser is going crazy, but that's okay. So um, that's it for today, guys. And leave me in the comments if you guys want further explanation. I'll try to get back to all the comments as uh, fast as I can. My wrist is almost healed. I can type again. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Study every day with Sexy J. That's the best way. You already know. Bye-bye. Today's topic is the past tense. Now, there are many, many different types of past tenses. So we're going to focus today on 
past perfect and how it's usually wrong. Okay, not 100%, but if I had to take a tally of how many times the past perfect has come up and how many times people have chosen wrongly, it's 95% people get it wrong because they trust in it too much, okay? So if I see the past perfect, do you guys know what that is? When you see had and a participle, so had eaten, had gone, had, in this case, studied, when you see that answer choice, be suspicious, okay? Because this is the tense that people don't really use in real life. Just like the word whom that we don't really use in real life, okay? So I've noticed a lot of students go, I don't use that in real life, so it sounds fancy and proper, like proper grammar. So I'm just going to pick it because it seems correct. SAT knows that. They are in our heads to a degree. It's kind of scary. So they use it so, 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 so much as a trap answer. In the tense problems, I would say this is the most commonly done trap, okay? So had eaten, had gone, had studied whom, I would probably say, if I'm guessing, take that out. Now, I don't want to be guessing though. That's why you're on the channel, right? So when do I use this tense exactly? Well, the past perfect works like this. I need past event. Okay, let's say time flows this way. Time flows to the right. And the past perfect goes here. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, um, my friend called. My friend called, that's in the past, right? Um, for dinner, comma, but I had eaten. So how does the time flow go here? My friend called me, that's somewhere in the past, yeah? But me eating dinner was already before that. It's like, oh, sorry, dude, I already ate. So I can't come out. So when an idea is like already happened, that's the past perfect. And that we don't really use it in real life, right? It's like somebody goes, oh, did you watch this movie? Oh, I already watched it, right? So you don't really go, oh, my friend asked, but I had watched the movie already. Nobody talks like that, right? That's why they use it as a common trap answer, okay? So um, that's out. And that was the main tense I want to talk about today because uh, one of you guys asked in the email and also in comments, uh, how do I do past perfect questions? Honestly, it's usually the trap, but this specific scenario is the only time you can use it. And you can see why it will be pretty difficult for it to be correct, okay? So the present perfect is also here, has studied. That one I'm gonna make a separate video about, so we're not gonna talk about it too much, but um, has studied is going to be continues to the present or a flexible time. Okay, so I'll give you guys two examples for those two. Um, Definitions. Continues to the present means I have studied piano for five years. What does that mean? I started five years ago. I am still studying now. Versus I studied piano for five years. What is that? I could have started in 2000 and ended in 2005, started in 2015, ended in 2020. Doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't continue to the present. Okay. Or the other one, flexible time. Let's say um, I have been to the beach, period. I've been to the beach. What does it mean? Sometime in my past, I've been to the beach, okay? Now, why am I saying flexible time? Because the past tense, simple past, I need a specific time. Or this is a better way to think about it. If I have a specific time, like here, that's going to be a simple past tense, okay? So if I say, like, like even sound this out, guys, okay? Let's say I say, in 2015, I went to the beach. Makes sense, right? In 2015, I have gone to the beach. It's weird. And there's a reason it's weird and that breaks the rule, okay? If I have a specific time in 2015, last Tuesday, July 15th, 1994, whatever it is, I have to just use the past tense, simple past. So that's this one, was. Technically, this is a past progressive because the ING, but do we care about that? No, why? Doesn't matter for SAT, okay? They're not gonna pick, make you pick between was studying and studied because they both work here. They're not gonna give you two correct answers, okay? So um, that's today's quick and dirty on the past tenses. I will keep making grammar and punctuation videos because you guys are asking for them. And when you guys ask for concepts, it'll help greatly if you have a link or a screenshot to the type of problem you're referring to so I can be sure that I'm getting exactly what you guys uh, need help on, right? So help me help you guys 
Uh, thank you very much for watching. I uh, look forward to your comments and feedback. Study every day with Sexy J. It's the best way. You already know. Bye-bye.